So episode 7 of Blue Planet is called Tidal Seas and it's all about the tides. So we open up in the Amazon and we just get an example of how the tides work. It's in the Amazon basin so it's pretty much where the fresh water meets salt. So it's just kind of a way of introducing you to the tides. And from there we see herring. So I feel like herring have popped up quite a lot in the series. But what hasn't popped up a lot in the series and what doesn't pop up in really any other series are fin whales. So we see fin whales hunting herring. We do see a bit of humpback whales which I've seen before in this series. But seeing fin whales hunting them was very different. I think fin whales, considering they're the second largest animals on the planet, they don't get a lot of love. Blue whales do tend to reap all the rewards of being just a bit bigger. But fin whales are really impressive as well. I mean, they're massive. We spend quite a bit of time with them at the start. It's quite good. It's just seeing them feeding, but I think just seeing them at all is great. They're an animal we don't see very often, and I can't think of any other series that gives them as much time as this. Then we see sand bubbler crabs. So sand bubbler crabs are the ones we just see turning the sand into balls while they're filtering out the sand for invertebrates. It, to be honest with you, what I really like about this sequence was the music. It was hilarious. It's very much like a Caribbean meets match day football. The music just adds a lot to the sequence. It's very funny and I liked it. Then we see when the tides come out, we see all these clams get stuck around the west coast of North America and we see that they're great pickings for grizzly bears. I think this might have been the same team film in this as the ones that did Life of Mammals because the series came out at the same time and this behaviour does feature in Life of Mammals. But it's quite good. Again, the series Blue Planet, you don't expect to see bears popping up. This episode does give a lot of land animals a bit of shine. Then it's the surfing sea snails. So we see when dead things wash up on the beach. They give off this very pungent odour, shall we say, and that attracts all these little sea snails. Now, obviously, they don't travel very fast, so in order to pick up the pace, they surf the waves and are able to get there. That's really cool. It's one of the sequences I remember most about the series. Uh, I find it's just quite fun. Uh, again, the music as well is very reminiscent of, like, 80s surfer flicks, I think. Uh, and I, I thought it was just fun. Again, it's a bit of cheese, but it's pretty fun. And I thought it was really interesting behaviour as well anyway, so I thought it was pretty cool. We also give waders quite a lot of time to shine. We talk about how waders' very specific beaks are great for getting invertebrates out of sand. We don't spend a lot of time with waders in most series, so I like we just highlight them here because they're, they're quite important. Uh, I think one of the better sequences was the sea lancets. They just kind of see them swimming out looking for plankton, but then they go a bit too far out and they're hunted by dogfish. So dogfish, another predator we don't see very often, certainly not in a predatory context. We see razorfish and they're out there getting the plankton. However, they are prey for bottlenose dolphins. We spend quite a bit of time with the bottlenose dolphins using their echolocation to find the razorfish. All good stuff, again, it's stuff we've seen before, but it's just kind of nice seeing it. You mentioned how this one bottlenose dolphin looks like it has a craven for razorfish because it's pregnant. Stuff like that. There's a lot more humour in this episode than there usually is. And I think the music's also quite cheesy throughout. There's also the tulip snail, which gets hunted by the giant horse conch. It's not a rapid uh, chase by any means, but it's also quite entertaining. The snail's trying to get away. But this conch is just so massive. And Amber says how it's basically the Ferrari of the snail world, which is also very funny. And it manages to catch the tulip snail. This also creates a, an element of real estate for a lot of hermit crabs. A lot of hermit crabs come out and they're trying to get the tulip snail's shell. Uh, to the point where one actually just goes inside the shell while the conch is eating the snail. Uh, very risky, but manages to get away. Uh, that was quite fun. Then we go to one of my favourite habitats, which is the mangroves. I always like mangroves. Something about them, they just feel quite cool. The most interesting thing in the mangroves we see are tarpon, which are these fish that actually can breathe air. So they're able to retain oxygen and are able to hunt in the mangroves even though the tides have gone out. Quite cool stuff as well. I like that. In the Caribbean, we see that when the tides come out, it leaves a lot of salt, which creates these really briny habitats, which are great for brine flies and brine shrimp, which are the main prey of flamingos. We see a lot of Caribbean flamingos. This is stuff we've seen a lot since. Just flamingos living in these really inhospitable places and how they just flourish. It's always reliably entertaining. Flamingos, and specifically flamingo chicks, are always quite cool. I think people like them, so again, it's reliable entertainment. And then we kind of cap it off with the bottlenose dolphins again, uh, hunting fish in the Florida Keys. It's the same thing we've seen a lot since, which was them swimming in a circle to drum up the fish and then catching them. Uh, we don't as get, to be honest, we clearly didn't have the technology to get as an in-depth view. Uh, drones weren't a thing at the time, so we don't see them creating these spiral formations in the water. That footage has definitely been repeated a lot since and done better subsequently just because the technology has come along. Then the diaries was the people filming the coral spawning, so nothing really to do with this episode, but it was fine. What I liked most about that was the people bickering, the sort of banter on the boat, that was quite funny. Especially one of them next to the other one's beer, it looks like. Quite funny stuff. So yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, this episode, overall, uh, there's a lot of stuff in it that I'd seen before, and there aren't as many like massive moments in it. However, I think this is one of the episodes I've enjoyed most in this series. Uh, maybe because of the cheesy nostalgia that it has throughout the episode, which is quite fun. Uh, but yeah, I just liked it. I think the highlights were probably the surfing snails. I also like the tulip snail and the conch. 
the hermit crabs, stuff like that was all really good. So yeah, what were your highlights? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll be doing the final episode next week, which is coasts. So kind of similar to this one, but not. It uh, won't be dealing with tides anymore. Uh, and yeah, um, feel free to like, comment and subscribe or don't. If you don't want it, it's fine. Uh, I'll see you next week and goodbye.